Hello and welcome to a concluding part of Psalm 1 in our reflections. Up until now we've been looking at how the psalmist describes those who delight in the teaching of God uh, and how they are like a tree planted in well irrigated streams and how they flourish and bear fruit. And then we have a, a sudden contrast. Let me read the, the last three verses of Psalm 1. The wicked are not like this. They are like chaff driven by the wind. When judgment comes, they shall not stand. The Lord watches over the path of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Now, the problem with the Psalms for us in the modern world is they cover the whole range of emotions and subjects and uh, various viewpoints. There are times the Psalms make us go, wow, and there's times they make us wince. And I suppose in the modern world, these last verses might jar a little with some of the positivity in the first part of the Psalm, because it seems to indicate judgment and self-righteousness. So let's deal with that. As I say, the Psalms uh, are the songbook of ancient Israel. They were written during times of war as well as times of peace. They're about joy, but they're also about sorrow and lament. They're about wrestling with doubt. They're about praise. And yes, they're about judgment too. The first thing to say is that in the scriptures, in a sense, judgment begins with the, the people of God. In the Old Testament, time after time after time, it's the religious leaders who are being criticised. And the same in the New Testament. We only have to look at the, the behaviour sometimes of some of the disciples. We only have to realise that the, the condemnation of many passages is towards those who should know better, not those who are outside of the faith. So that's the first qualification. And secondly, we also have to remember that if we do away with all forms of judgment, what does that say about life? If this life is a gift, if it's a trust, and indeed if it's a task, is there no sense in which we are accountable for how we live it? Are we responsible for how we live it? Or does it not matter? Because if we're saying there are some right things to do, that uh, a, a positive and rewarding way of living, there's also the opposite. Think about the metaphor of one mountain, many paths, that's quite popular in the mo modern world to indicate that all religions are the same. So. Choose a path and you'll get up to the mountain top. Problem with that is not all paths lead to the mountain top. Some paths lead over the precipice. Is that not true in history? Can we not see that? How nations and, and empires and even individuals have taken wrong turnings and it's ended up a disaster. So when the Bible talks about the wicked, we have to acknowledge, look at history, look at our world today, and yes, look within our own hearts. There is such a thing as sin and wickedness in our world. So let's not, in a sense, draw back from that. And the psalmist takes it head on. But remember also this. There is the judgment of love. I keep thinking when I remember Peter who denied Jesus three times. And when he encountered Jesus after the resurrection and Jesus asked him three times, do you love me, Peter? And each time Peter's going, Peter was almost, he was wincing, he was wilting with it. You know I love you. And in a sense, I'm quite sure Peter would have felt much better if Jesus had come up to him and slapped his head. You betrayed me and given him a good beating up. I think Peter would actually have felt bad. A better because he felt so bad about having betrayed his master. But it's the fact that Jesus was patient with him and loving with him. And I sometimes think the judgment of love is the harshest judgment. And if God is love, then he is disappointed.
disappointed, desperately disappointed with what's going on in our world. And perhaps the, the greatest sense of judgment we can get is the sense of disappointing our God and not living up to what he wants for us. But we can't just leave it there. If there is such a thing as evil in our world, is there no accounting for that? Will nobody be brought to the bar for something like Auschwitz? Is that just a detail of history now? We dispense with judgment at our peril. So the psalmist gives us a wee warning. There is a right way to live, but there's a wrong way to live. And that wrong way can sometimes lead to disaster from a nation's point of view or an empire's point of view, but also from an individual's point of view. So choosing the right path is so important. And Psalm 1, I think, gives us guidance on that. And it challenges us. Maybe it pulls us up short. But these last three verses, perhaps, we need. Because we tend to go through the Bible, pick all the nice parts, talk about love and goodness and grace, make us feel good. But there's the warnings as well. Look, life is a serious business. And... God wants us to take it seriously. So perhaps Psalm 1 could be the jolt that we need to consider some of these big issues, especially now that we, well, some of us anyway, have time on our hands with lockdown. Those of us who are on furlough, learning new things like baking or gardening or going on the internet and learning new skills, taking up a musical instrument. How about spiritual matters? Let's invest in that too during these weeks. May the God of the psalmist be yours and mine these days. Thank you for listening and I'll see you tomorrow.